Hi, everyone. I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In this video, I'm going to be talking about covering spaces. I'll tell you what they are and discuss some of their basic properties, in particular, uh, how you can lift maps to covers. And at the end, I'll describe how the category of covers is equivalent to a very nice algebraic category. Let's begin with the definition. A map from a space E to a space B, I'll call the map P, is called a covering map or a covering space or just a cover if it has the property that every point B of the base space sits inside of an open neighborhood U that is evenly covered by the map P. That means that the pre-image of this open set, call it U, is isomorphic to the fiber over B, uh, here I've called that F sub B, uh, cross U. That is, each connected component of the pre-image of U is isomorphic to U itself. Now, because this definition is really a definition about the map, I prefer the terminology covering map or just cover rather than covering space. Now, because Every point of the base space is contained in one of these open sets U that's evenly covered by the, by the map P. It means that every point B is in the image of the map P. So covering maps have to be surjective. More than that, you can check that a covering map sends an open subset of E to an open subset of B, and therefore will be a quotient map. So the base of a covering map is precisely the quotient of the total space E where all of the fibers over a point have been identified. Now that you know what a cover is, you might be able to guess what a morphism from a cover E over B to another cover E prime over B is. It's just gonna be a continuous function from E to E prime that commutes with the projections down to B. Here in my notes, I've drawn E prime to E, but it should go from E to E prime. So for a fixed base space B, you have a category called covers of B, where the objects are covers, E over B, and the morphisms are morphisms between covers. Now, the most important property for covering spaces is this path lifting property, which says that if you have any path gamma in the base space and you pick a lift in the fiber over the initial point of gamma, that there's a unique lift called gamma tilde to the, to the total space E. And there's a second part to this path lifting property, which says that if you have two different paths, gamma and gamma prime in the base space that are homotopic, then they lift to path homotopic paths gamma tilde and gamma prime tilde in the total space. And because they're path homotopic, they have the same endpoints. Now, there's nothing tricky in the details of lifting a path from a base space to the total space. Uh, the path, say, gamma starts at some base point B0 that's in one of these open neighborhood that's evenly covered by the projection map P. And so you can lift gamma in that open neighborhood. And you just proceed little by little. Because gamma is the image of a compact set, gamma will be compact itself. And you can, in this process, this piece by piece process can be done in finitely many steps. Then you have to check that. Um, that this lifting process behaves well with homotopies because you can lift homotopies piece by piece as well since a homotopy between two curves is a map of the square which is compact. And so the image of this homotopy can be broken up into little pieces that sit inside these fundamental admissible neighborhoods. So one really nice consequence of the path lifting property is you uh, take a cover, E over B, pick base points, little b for your base and little e for your total space. Then you can apply pi 1 to the cover to get a, a map from the fundamental group of the total space to the fundamental group of the base space. And the result is that this group homomorphism is injective. And the way that you prove that 
is that you prove that the kernel of this group homomorphism is trivial. So you take an arbitrary loop in the base, in the total space, call it gamma, that map it down to a loop in the base space, that, and you assume that that image is trivial in the fundamental group of the base space. That is, you assume that P gamma is homotopic to the constant loop at B. Now, you use path lifting. So on the left, uh, a lift of P gamma is gamma. On the right, a lift of the constant path at B is a constant path at E. And since we're assuming that P gamma is homotopic to the constant path at B, the homotopy part of the path lifting property allows us to conclude that the lifts are homotopic. That is the path gamma that we started with is homotopic to a constant path at E. So the conclusion is that the fundamental group of the total space injects into the fundamental group of the base space. And what we're going to do is just identify the fundamental group of the total space with its image and view it as a subgroup of the fundamental group of the base space. Now, the path lifting property enjoyed by covers has implications for more general kinds of lifting problems. So to be explicit, suppose I have a cover, E maps down to B, and I have a map from a topological space X into B. Now the general lifting problem for that map from X into B asks whether there exists a lift to a map from X into E as pictured here. Now one can check that if X is a connected topological space, if a lift exists, it has to be unique. But when does a lift exist? Well, one way to get an easy necessary condition is to assume that a lift exists and then apply pi one. That gives you a condition on the fundamental groups. So if you pick base points and apply pi one to this diagram, you see that the image of the fundamental group of X in the fundamental group of the base space B has to actually land in the image of the fundamental group of the total space when we view that fundamental group as a subgroup of the fundamental group of the base space. And the rather amazing theorem is that this necessary condition obtained by taking what you want to exist and applying pi one and getting an algebraic condition is actually sufficient, at least under mild topological assumptions on your space X. So in other words, lifts exist and are unique if and only if the image of the fundamental group of X lands inside the, the fundamental group of the total space. And that's true when X is locally path connected and connected. Now, observe that morphisms of covers are themselves solutions to the general lifting problem. In other words, if you fix a cover E over B and you pick another cover with a base point E prime uh, into B, then a morphism from the cover E prime to the cover E is a solution to the lifting problem. Therefore, we know exactly when it has a solution which is when the fundamental group of E prime sits inside the fundamental group of E. And we're viewing these all within the fundamental group of B. So it's a really tidy condition. So this gives us a rather uh, nice picture of the category of covers over a base space B as, as a rather thin category. There aren't many morphisms between covers, and when they exist, they're going to be unique. Uh, at least this is this is the case when we put base points in, so we're dealing with based covers, and we assume that our covering spaces are connected and locally path connected. Now, if uh, you have a base space B that has a simply connected covering space, that covering space will be universal in the sense that it will map to every other covering space because its fundamental group is trivial 
therefore sits inside the fundamental group of every other covering space viewed as a sub subgroup of the fundamental group of the base space. Moreover, if you have a universal cover for a particular space B, then to every subgroup H of the fundamental group of the base space, there will exist a cover whose fundamental group is that subgroup H. And the universal cover is the key to constructing this cover with subgroup H because you can obtain it by a simple quotient of the universal cover. And to describe the equivalence relation that you have to quotient out by, start with a loop at the base point B of the base point that's in this subgroup of the fundamental group H. Then lift this to a path in the universal cover. Now, this path in general won't be a loop in the universal cover, but it will be a path from one point in the fiber over B to a different point in the fiber over B. And then you identify those two points in the fiber. And then after you make that identification, this path actually becomes a loop. And in the quotient space, it becomes a loop in the fundamental group of the quotient space. So then this gives a pretty simple picture of the category of covers of a space B when B has a universal cover. Namely, at the very bottom, you have B itself, which is a cover of itself with the identity map as the covering map. And then you have other covers, E, E prime, E double prime. And then the universal cover maps to all of them. And each of these corresponds uniquely to a subgroup of the fundamental group of your base space with the entire fundamental group corresponding to the base space and the trivial group corresponding to the fundamental group. This category looks just like the lattice of subgroups of the fundamental group of the base space. It's a simple poset. And so the question really becomes, when does a base space have a universal cover? Well, let me describe a way to get a necessary condition. So start with your cover, E tilde over B. Pick base points, B and a base point of the total space in the fiber over B. Then there's one of these fundamental neighborhoods around the base point of the space B that lifts to a collection of open subsets of E, each of which looks homeomorphic to you. Now, one of those components will take will contain the base point of the total space, and you will be homeomorphic to that component of P inverse of U. Therefore, locally, we can invert the map P and get a map from UB up to a homeomorphic copy of U, which I'm calling V. It's a homeomorphic copy in the total space that contains the base point of the total space. And the map from U into B is just the composition of this locally inverted copy of the projection, followed by the map into the total space down to the base space. Now, apply pi one to this picture. And what you see is that the fundamental group of the neighborhood U must be trivial inside the fundamental group of the base space. And the reason for that is that it factors through pi one of the total space, which because that's a universal cover is trivial. So the big surprise is that this very simple algebraic necessary condition is also sufficient for B to have a universal cover. Now, some authors give this condition a name. In other words, if every point of the base space has a neighborhood whose image in the fundamental group of the base space is trivial, uh, they call that semi-locally simply connected, which I'm not going to write down because it sounds too complicated. Now, you might ask, how do you construct a universal cover? if you know it, it satisfies this necessary condition? The answer is kind of simple. You start with the space of paths on your base space B, 
and then you quotient by an equivalence relation defined by homotopy equivalence of paths. Well, that's all I'm going to say in this video. I'm going to return to this topic in a second video to discuss the category of covers when you don't choose base points and you don't assume that your covers are connected spaces. In this case, you still get that the category of covers is equivalent to an algebraic category, a very nice algebraic category. It just has a slightly different description. Thank you for your attention.